Welcome to Movie Shortens. Follow us today to a 1988 American action film called Maniac Cop. Before we start, be aware, there are spoilers. As we begin this film, we see a woman named Cassie Phillips leaving a bar to head home for the night. On the way, she is suddenly attacked by two men who are trying to rob her. She bravely fights them off and begins to run away. She is chased through the city, and she runs to hide in a local park. The two muggers continue to search for her, and they spot her as she runs towards a police officer nearby. She runs towards for help, but then, strangely, the police officer picks her up and kills her right away. The next day, police are called to the scene of the murder, and the two muggers are arrested. Later, at the medical examiner's, Lieutenant Frank McRae and Detective Lovejoy come to examine Cassie's body. The coroner gives an explanation to the victim's injuries. Frank doesn't believe that the two robbers are responsible for her death, but Lovejoy is insistent that they are. Frank believes that the robbers are telling the truth. Later that night, a young couple almost runs a red light. They begin to kiss, but are interrupted by a police officer. The officer tells the young man to step outside and promptly kills him. The young woman is terrified and drives away. Elsewhere in his office, police commissioner Pike gets a visit from Frank. Pike wonders why Frank automatically assumes a police officer has murdered two people. Frank still sticks to his theory, insisting there should be an evaluation of the police force for any potential suspects. He admits, though, he does not really know where to start in his investigation. Commissioner Pike wants Frank to keep his investigation quiet for now, and Frank agrees. Frank also warns that the killer will continue to do as such that he enjoys the act. Pike brings up Frank's own mental struggles, citing an issue some years back after Frank's old partner died in the line of duty. Later during the night, a musician is walking to his car and begins to leave when he is cuffed by the murderous police officer. The man runs away, yelling for help. He runs to a nearby building, but continues to flee when he gets no help. He then trips on a loose piece of pavement into some wet cement and is killed by the rogue police officer. The next day, the city mayor orders for these killings to be kept under wraps for the time being, as it would affect his re-election. Frank meets with a woman named Regina Shepard at a local bar. He then explains the situation with the police officer, now dubbed the maniac cop to Regina. He wants her to use her position as a news anchor to force City Hall to take the threat seriously. The next day, the mayor sees the news report and is furious, but tries to get ahead of it by releasing a statement saying that he is taking action. Later on, Pike is with Councilman and Capitol Ripley discussing the multiple reports they have been getting over the so-called maniac cop. The councilman notes how much the maniac cop is affecting the city, and Captain Ripley states that the killer is always one step ahead of him. Pike then comes to the conclusion that the maniac cop is an actual cop on the police force, not an imposter. Elsewhere, we see a woman named Ellen Forrest cut out some newspaper clippings. She then goes and talks to her husband, police officer Jack Forrest, and tells him that she worries about him working late nights. Ellen then goes on about their marriage troubles, and Jack tells her that he tried to save their failing marriage, but was not successful. She begs him not to go, but he promises to make it up to her later, and he goes to leave. Ellen then gets a call and picks up the phone from a mysterious woman who claims that Jack is the maniac cop. Ellen then gets dressed and grabs her gun, leaving out of her apartment. She heads outside and goes to follow Jack from a distance. She follows Jack to a motel and watches him enter her room. She then gets the key to the room and catches Jack with his mistress, whose name is Teresa Mallory. Ellen tells Jack she thought he was the maniac cop, and he tries to explain himself to her about the affair. She then aims her weapon at both Jack and Teresa, but then eventually rushes out of the room. Outside, Ellen is grabbed by the maniac cop and taken away. The next morning, 
the housekeeper comes into the room where Jack and Teresa had spent the night and finds Ellen dead on the bed. At the police station, Ripley calls Jack to ask about his relationship with Ellen. Ripley then tells him about Ellen's death and Jack is surprised, protesting his innocence in the matter. Sometime later, the mayor makes an announcement on Jack's recent arrest and charges of murder as the maniac cop. In a holding room, Jack is being interrogated by Captain Ripley and Commissioner Pike. They both show Jack the newspaper clippings Ellen had saved and her diary that harbors suspicions of Jack being the maniac cop. They tried to get an alibi out of Jack, but his lawyer interrupts, sending Pike and Ripley out of the room. Jack's lawyer begins to go over his defense options, but Jack protests innocence, claiming he has a witness, but refuses to give Teresa's name unless absolutely necessary. Later on, Frank and Ripley are at a bar watching a news program talking about the maniac cop and his reflection on the entire police force. Frank believes that Jack is innocent and has been set up. He also goes on to say that Jack is protecting someone and the killer knows who. Jack is then visited by Frank, who tells Jack that the maniac cop has set him up. He goes on to tell Jack that Teresa is in danger, being the only connection to the maniac cop. Jack then reveals Teresa's identity to Frank, telling him she is a police officer on the force. Later that night, Teresa is working undercover, and then she suddenly comes across the maniac cop. He approaches her as Frank goes looking for Teresa nearby. She tries to identify herself as a cop, but is attacked by the maniac cop. She shoots the maniac cop, but he's unharmed. Frank rushes onto the scene, shooting as well, but the maniac cop seemingly disappears into thin air. Later, Teresa and Frank discuss what had just happened with the maniac cop. Teresa claims that the maniac cop wasn't even breathing when he attacked her. Frank then asks Teresa for any information about Jack then tells her he's going to put her away somewhere safe. He also tells Teresa that Jack has been set up and asks who she told about her and Jack's relationship. She tells him about a woman named Sally Knowles who works as a policewoman, that she was the only person that she told. Frank then gives Teresa a key to his apartment and calls her a cab to get her there. Afterwards, he goes to the police office to find out more information. Sally then approaches and Frank tells her about what happened to Teresa. After a brief bit of conversation, Frank leaves. Later that night, Sally leaves her office and is tailed by Frank. He then follows her to a pier nearby a river. Frank watches as she begins to talk to the maniac cop. Sally tells the maniac cop that if he stops killing for a bit, Jack will take the fall for the crimes. She then goes on to elaborate on their plan for him to kill the commissioner, mayor, and other people responsible for his wrongful imprisonment. She reveals the maniac cop's name to be Matt. Just then, she sees Frank watching them and begins to attack him, but he drives away. Frank then goes to see a man named Clancy to learn more about the maniac cop. He finds the maniac cop's full name, which is Matt Cordell, and his history of incarceration. Clancy then tells Crank, that Matt has been dead for years, and Sally, who was his girlfriend, had tried to follow him when Matt was imprisoned. He then goes on to tell Frank that Matt used to be a good cop, but made trouble on the force and was being plotted upon by his superiors. Elsewhere, Matt thinks back on his time in prison when he was attacked by some inmates with knives. Later, Matt puts up a fight until he is finally brought down and viciously killed by the inmates. Later, Frank and Teresa visit Jack in jail and tell him about Matt's death. Leaving Teresa and Jack alone, Frank goes into Sally's office where she attacks him for spying on her and Matt. Suddenly, Matt appears and kills Sally. Frank tries to attack but is instead thrown across. Elsewhere in the station, Teresa springs Jack out of jail and he tells her to go wait in Frank's car. Inside, Lovejoy almost attacks Jack, thinking, he is responsible for the killings. Jack hits him and runs outside, escaping with Teresa. The next morning, Jack and Teresa go visit a man named Dr. Grubber at the prison where Matt had died. Dr. Grubber then tells them that Matt was actually alive after the attack. 
despite being technically brain dead. Elsewhere in the city, a St. Patrick's Day parade is being held. Teresa goes to the police station to warn Pike that Matt will be after his life. Teresa goes to Pike's office to tell him the maniac cop's real identity, but Pike and Ripley refuse to believe her. In an attempt to cover up the conspiracy to frame Matt, they have Teresa arrested while they both leave. However, before they can get out of the building, they are killed by Matt in the elevator. The cop that has arrested Teresa is also killed as well, and Teresa escapes and goes into a room, climbing onto the window ledge outside. Outside, some policemen who think Jack is still the maniac cop take him away in a police van. Suddenly, Matt takes the driver out of the police van and pulls away with Jack still inside. Teresa gets in another cop car with an officer and follows him to Matt's hideout on the pier. Matt gets out of the police van and attempts to open the door with an ax. Jack tries to escape, but Matt prevents him from doing so, attacking and throwing Jack in the way of Teresa, who is trying to kill Matt. Matt then picks up Teresa's gun and kills a police officer who tries to stop him, but Jack knocks the gun away and they both begin to fight. Matt punches Jack and attempts to flee in the police van. Jack then tries to attempt to stop Matt from escaping by jumping in the police van with him. They struggle for control of the vehicle, but they end up having an accident in which Matt is killed inside. Immediately after, Jack braces himself as they crash into the water. After the accident, Jack and Teresa watch as the police van is pulled from the water, but Matt is nowhere to be found. Nearby, from under the water, Matt's hand appears. Like and subscribe to watch more videos like this. And don't forget to turn on your notifications. That really helps my channel. Thanks for watching.